Welcome to Tutorial 5, Influent Data and Influent Advisor. In this tutorial, we will investigate Influent models in GPSX and how the Influent Advisor can be used as a tool to characterize your Influent data prior to performing a plant calibration. Begin by creating a new layout and save it with an appropriate name. We will be using the Mantis 2 library for this tutorial. Ensure that it has been selected from the library drop-down menu. From the Influent group of the process table, add an Influent object onto the drawing board. Switch to simulation mode. Create a new scenario and name it Influent. This will allow us to make changes to the Influent composition within simulation mode. Open the Influent Advisor tool by right-clicking on the Influent object and selecting Composition Influent Characterization. The Influent Advisor is separated into three distinct columns. The value of the variables in the left-hand column can be directly defined by the user. The two other columns contain the state variables and the composite variables respectively, which cannot be defined by the user, but rather are calculated from the user inputs in the first column. You will notice that some of the menus in the state and composite variables columns are collapsed such that only the subheading is visible. If you wish to see the collapsed variables, click on the subheading name to expand the menu and display all of the hidden variables. For this tutorial, we will be using the following data to represent our influent composition. From the provided data, only three of the variables, total COD, ammonia nitrogen, and total TKN can be input directly into the user section of the Influent Advisor. Enter these values into the Influent Advisor now. Notice that the text of the changed values is green, indicating that the changes we are making are only applicable in the currently active scenario. As we change the values in the user column of the Influent Advisor, values in both the state and composite variables columns are changing. Notice how these values are different than the Influent data we were provided with, indicating that some of the default settings, either composition data or stoichiometric fractions are incorrect, producing the inconsistencies within our model. We will now explore how the Influent Advisor can be used to reconcile these discrepancies. Find the VSS variable in the Composite Variables column and click on it. This will highlight the VSS variable, dark blue, and any variables that are used to calculate it, light blue. You will notice that some of the subheadings of the collapsed menus are shaded light blue as well to indicate that variables used to calculate the VSS are contained within these subheadings. You can click on the subheadings to display these variables if desired. If you scroll up and down the page, you will be able to see all of the variables that affect the calculated value of VSS. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see the equation used in GPSX to calculate the currently selected variable, which in this case is VSS. Let's now adjust the influent parameters to reconcile the model prediction with the plant data. We have plant data for both TSS and VSS, which allows us to calculate the VSS to TSS ratio. Enter this value under the User Inputs column. When you look at the effects of the adjustment, it appears that the values have moved even further away from the plant data. We will need to further adjust the influent. When VSS is selected, it is easily seen that the VSS is a function of variables in the other particulate organic compounds subheading in the state variables column, which includes particulate inert material, unbiodegradable cell products, and slowly biodegradable substrate. Due to our VSS being lower than our target, we must distribute more of the influent COD to the particulate form and less to the soluble form. We will attempt to increase the amount of particulate COD by adjusting the variables under the organic fraction subheading in the user inputs column. Try setting the soluble inert fraction of COD to 0.02, the readily biodegradable fraction of total COD to 0.15, and the colloidal fraction of slowly biodegradable COD to 0.05. These changes will force more of the COD into the slowly biodegradable substrate state variable, which will increase VSS and TSS. Lastly, we will make changes to adjust the soluble TKN value in the composite variables column. Expand the other nitrogen variables subheading in the composite variables column and click on the soluble TKN variable to see which variables are used to calculate it. Click on the state variables in the equation to see which input parameters should be adjusted. 
Let's continue to adjust the colloidal fraction of slowly biodegradable COD and the ammonium fraction of soluble TKN. Let's see how these changes have affected the composite variables. Our model is starting to produce results that are similar to our plant data. We'll make a few more slight adjustments. Here's a possible solution that produces model outputs that match our plant data. When performing a model calibration, you may need to adjust these values further to match certain process parameters. For example, finding appropriate values for particulate inert material and the slowly biodegradable substrate are key for matching your MLSS concentration and the amount of sludge produced. During a plant calibration, the goal is to match not only the influent, but also the plant performance at various points throughout the layout. We will now demonstrate how the influent advisor warns against improperly characterized influent. Change the value of TKN to 15 mg per liter and press enter on your keyboard. You will notice that some of the state and composite variables have been highlighted red to indicate that a negative value has been calculated, which can be the result of a poor influent characterization. Negative concentrations can cause mass balance errors and convergence problems. If you attempt to accept a poorly characterized influent, a pop-up will appear to warn you that you have an influent characterization that results in negative state or composite variables. You will be unable to accept the influent characterization until these values are fixed. A dynamic data validation tool is also available in the Influent Advisor to validate your dynamic influent data prior to running a simulation. It does this by reading in the dynamic data and performing influent characterization calculations at each step. To use this tool, press the dynamic data validation tool in the bottom left corner of the Influent Advisor. This will open the dynamic data validation window where you will be required to add an input and output Excel sheet. Begin by adding a data input file. This can be done in two ways. Create an Excel sheet outside of GPSX and adding it to the tool or by using the Create Template tool to prepare a file. We will be using the Create Template tool. Press the Create Template button to open a selection window. From the menu, select Total COD, Total TKN, and Ammonia Nitrogen. Press Accept and save the file in the current working directory. Open the file when prompted. This will open a table in Excel with columns for the elapsed time and the three variables we have previously selected. Enter the following data into the table. Save the changes made to the spreadsheet and close Excel. An output file is also required for the dynamic data validation tool. Press the Browse button. You can select a pre-built output file or use the default Excel file GPSX creates. Press Save to use the default file. With both files set up, the Validate Data button will be available. Click on it. After GPSX validates the data, it will prompt you to open the output file. Press Yes. When the file opens, you will notice that rows 4 and 9 are highlighted yellow. This indicates that the conditions used in that row result in an invalid influent characterization. You will also notice that some of the cells have been highlighted red. These cells correspond to the negative values calculated with the respected influent characterization. You have now completed Tutorial 5 in the GPSX tutorial series. You should now be familiar with using the Influent Advisor tool in GPSX.